this church is going to come into a prophetic season. Tremendous prophetic season of seeing what the Holy Spirit, see the prophecy isn't fortune telling, it's simply an unveiling of God's purpose. That's all it is. God gives a glimpse. We declare what we hear. We declare the word of the Lord. And I want to say, though, that in the prophetic sense, it's not enough. I think there's a confusion from the standpoint of, of the prophetic as far as our lives are concerned because we have the idea that we got a prophecy, therefore it's just all going to fold together and happen. And that's simply not the way it happens. Let me show you how it works. First of all, you hear the word of the Lord. Then you begin to see the word of the Lord. Then you say the word of the Lord, and then you begin to walk in it. You walk toward it. So there's really four steps that I, that I would like to share with you for just a moment is the fact that we hear the word of the Lord, and everybody in this place, you've heard the word of the Lord. Gideon, they all heard what God had to say. Uh, there was a lot of people that heard what the word of the Lord was. You've heard prophecies, but, but there's something else, that next step, and this is where we usually fall short, is the fact that we fail to see it. You know, once God says it, then we've got to see it. You remember when, when Zacharias, the father of John the Baptist, he had the word of the Lord. You can't get a better word of the Lord than, than, than an angel coming from the throne of God saying, this is what's going to happen. But the first thing he was and said it was, I don't see it. <laughs> I'm old. My wife is old. I, I just, I'm not seeing it. See, there is something more than just hearing the word of the Lord. Hearing a prophetic word, you've got to see that. Now, the reason is, is because what you see opens the door for the boundaries that God operates in. I like a scripture over in Mark chapter 4. The Bible said in about verse twenty. It said that he was speaking of the seed being sown. The entire fourth chapter of the book of Mark was the seed being sown and it producing a hundredfold. Now, a hundredfold basically is the fact of it's it's not a hundred times. A hundredfold is to its fullest potential. Now, that's basically what it means. But he said something there. He said, take heed what you hear because the way you measure it is the way that it's measured back to you. Now see, when you begin to measure the word of the Lord, that's what you see. I see something and I measure it. And you measure everything you hear. I could say to you today, you're going to be, you're going to go to, you're going to go play for the Dallas Cowboys. And you know what you'll do? You're going to measure that and you'll go, <laughs> yeah, right, that's a measurement. It is. I could never do that. That's a measurement. You know what? I was born on the wrong side of the tracks. That's a measurement. I don't have the education. That's a measurement. Everything you hear, you measure. Everything. And he was saying, you take heed how you measure it. Can I just tell you this? When God gives a word, he doesn't measure it within your life. He doesn't use his yardstick to measure. He uses your yardstick, and you measure everything. And God says the way you measure it, that's the way it's going to be measured back to you. The way you measure it becomes the watermark for your life. The reason why you're in the shape that you're in today, the reason you're in the place you're in today, socially, spiritually, financially, is because of the way you see it and you measure it. You measure this and you said, this is what I can do. God says, great, I'll operate within the boundaries of that measurement. See, what happened? What was the difference between the 30-fold and the 60-fold and the 100-fold. Well, well, I'm just a 30-fold believer. You know, I'm a, I'm a person that if I can just, you know, if I can just barely make it in. When I was a kid, we used to sing that song, and we used to believe if I could just make it in. You know, I mean, and there was a, there was a poverty mindset. There was a, there was a lack mindset that we had that shaped who we were. I'm going to tell you something. People respond to you not based on what they think of you, but upon what, how you think of yourself. You know, if you're a great golfer, 
I can go down and I can say, I'm going to buy him something nice for Christmas. I think I'm going to go to Walmart and get a couple of little clubs out of the out of the Walmart. Well, you know, I would say, oh, he would never, he wouldn't want that. He's, but see, I'm not, I'm not buying him clubs based on what I think of him. I'm thinking about what he thinks of himself. People respond to you based on how you measure life. And the 30-fold and the 60-fold and the 100-fold, what made the difference? Because the Bible said in Mark chapter 4, said it was the same ground that produced 30-fold, that produced 60-fold, and that produced 100-fold. The same ground produced all three of those. What made the difference? the way they measured it. Some measured 34-fold, and that's what God operated in. See, when you measure something, God operates within the boundaries of those of that measure. And if it's 30-fold, it's, now God's not upset about it. God's not frustrated at you. God will take whatever you will give him. If, if he can just find a little bit of faith to work with, he'll jump on that and he'll work within the boundaries of that. But some saw 60-fold. They measured 60. When I hear it, I measure that for my life. I, I measure that. And God functions within the boundaries of that measurement. You know, when the Bible speaks of enlarging the borders of your habitation, stretch forth your tent, what he's talking about is, is the way you perceive things, the honor you give to something, what you're willing to believe about what God said. Well, God said he's going to do that. I know, but man, you know what? I'm just not too sure about it. That's a measurement. I measure, literally, I measure everything that I hear. Well, I, I have the wrong heritage. That's a measurement. Everything that you hear. I mean, it's so important that we hear the word of the Lord and that we respond to that. And we need to pray, Lord, give me eyes to see. Help me to see. To see what? To see what the word of the Lord says for me that I don't, that I don't limit the boundaries of what God's wanting to do in my life. And then some people, they responded a hundredfold or to its fullest potential that the Holy Spirit can now operate within that. And I can come to every one of you and I can say in your life, now there may be circumstances that happen that you weren't fully expecting, but I promise you the watermark for your life depends on what you see and what you measure. I don't have the right education. That is a measurement. I can do all things through Christ. That's a measurement. You know, they've, they've had people win the lottery. And it's amazing how many people that won millions of dollars that came right back down to a poverty level. How did that happen? Because you believe something about yourself and everything around you responds to what that watermark is. Everything. Everything. And that's why it's so important that you not be distracted nor hear the wrong things about who you are and about what God says you are. The very first thing that God did when he came in a relationship with you was to establish your righteousness, a right standing with him. God wanted you to know who you were. He said, you are the righteousness of God in Christ. All things are passed away. See, he's trying, he's trying to take you out of that, I'm just, a, I'm just a worm and I'm such a dog and I'm just an old sinner saved by grace. See, you were a sinner and you were saved by grace, but you're not that anymore. Now, now you're a new creature in Christ Jesus. All things are passed away and all things are become new. I'm telling you, all things are of God. So the boundaries for my life now, even in walking into the throne room of God has changed. I, I don't walk in fearful. I don't walk in unafraid, but I walk in boldly. I'm bold when I come before the throne of grace. Now, you know what boldness is? Boldness, you know, I... I, uh, boldness isn't the fact that you yell and, and come in the door, you know, ripping the door off its hinges. Boldness is simply an awareness of who you are. For instance, if, if, if Pastor Paul says, you know, there's a green car out there and a person there, would you, would you mind going out and getting into that and digging through there? There's something I need you to go get out of there. Well, I guarantee you, I'm going to go with great hesitation. I cannot be bold toward that. I can't be bold coming getting in your car. I just don't get in your car and go drive around. I'm not bold toward that. But I am bold about my car saying this. I don't even think about it. 
it's not a thought in my mind. When I go home and open my refrigerator, it's different than when I walk in your house and open your refrigerator. When I walk in your house and open your refrigerator, it's a sense of, I don't belong here. But when I'm bold, the bold, that's why the Bible said, come boldly before the throne of grace. It isn't with hesitation. It's, I belong here. This is mine. I understand that. I see that. And as long as you don't see that, you will always approach everything that God has for you with a sense of hesitation and a sense of, I don't belong here and I don't deserve this. See, God wants you to, de to deliver you out of that. So he gives you the word of the Lord. And I hear the word of the Lord. I know God said this, but do I see it? Do I really see it? Do I see that? I, I, I belong. I'm, that's me. That's, that, that has become the watermark for my life. See, once I, and you really can't say it. A lot of people, what they're trying to do is make a confession to it without ever seeing it. They like to hear it and then say it. But see, God says if you'll hear it and then see it, then when you say it, things begin to happen and the next step is you begin to walk toward it. And the Holy Spirit wants to pull you to the place. The prophetic has been given in this place. But I feel like the Lord is wanting to enlarge your boundaries, not of what you have here, but what you have here. Who am I here? What do I believe about me? What do I believe about who am I, Ashley? Who am I? Well, I'm just, I just came from a, no, 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 back up just a little bit. You heard the word of the Lord. Now you see it. You get a little bit of swagger in your step. Does anybody know what swagger is? I'm from the University of Oklahoma. Sorry. You ought to, you ought to live in Austin and be from there. They had a good streak back a number of years ago. And then they had a streak where it wasn't so good. <laughs> it was rough. And I'll never forget what one commentator said when he saw them come on the field one day. He said, look at it. They lost their swagger. And that said something. That said something. It's like they suddenly lost who they were. And it changed the disposition even of how they walked into the room. And I want to tell you today that God cannot take you, will not take you any further than what you see about you. Because the word of the Lord isn't just to change the church. God's not going to change the church if he doesn't change you. You are the church. And suddenly now I'm walking in on awareness that the Holy Spirit spoke to me and I belong there. I may not understand all the circumstances that's happening around me, but I belong there and I know, I know, I know that I belong there. Jeremiah chapter 1, it was so interesting what God said to Jeremiah. He came to him on three occasions and he came to him and said, Jeremiah, what do you see? And Jeremiah said, well, I see, and he described what he saw. And you know what God said? Great job. That's good. I'm proud of you. You see, God, he'll come to you and he'll ask, what do you see? And he doesn't chastise you for it. He'll operate within the boundaries of what you see. And then he came to him, to him about two or three verses later and said, Jeremiah, tell me again, what do you see? And then the third time he came to him, Jeremiah, tell me what you see. See, here's what God does. He goes from person to person, from church to church, and he says, tell me what you see. Because what you see makes the difference. Do you remember when the children of Israel, they went, they 12 spies, they went into the, into the promised land. 10 of them came back with, now see, God had already, and I'm not, God didn't tell them to go over and check out the land. God just told them that they were going to go possess the land. They got together and decided to have that little meeting. And so they sent one man from each tribe over to the promised land. Ten of them came back. And two of them, Joshua and Caleb, they said, listen, no 
doubt, man, that we can take the land. We can do it today. I know there's giants over there. I know all of that. The children of Anak, they're all, sure. But man, giants are there. But did you see the size of the grapes? And the ten said, listen, I know there's grapes over there, but did you see the size of the giants? Now, they both said the same thing, but they both measured it different. And as a result, what they saw hindered them. They made the statement. They said, we were in their sight and in our sight, and that's key right there, as grasshoppers. Now, I wonder how many giants they went up to and said, do I look like a grasshopper to you? They didn't go to anybody and ask that question. That's what they thought about themselves. And so they approached the promise of God and the provision of God with that question of saying, I'm not big enough. I could never do it. I could never go. I could never achieve that. I could never be a doctor. I could never be a scientist. I could never travel the world. I could never go start a church. I could never have a ministry. I could never do this because I don't have the right background, because I don't have the right money, because I don't have the right backing. All of those things, it's not the way God measured it. That's the way you measured it, and that's the reason you are in your life where you are right now. I believe that even your physical health and physical disposition responds to what you see about you. Is such a strong spiritual principle for your life. And so the Holy Spirit comes to you and he says, tell me what you see. Because what he does is he gives a word. This is what I want to do. I'm going to take you into the promised land. I'm going to do this for you. But then the second thing is, is he says to you, what do you see? In Mark chapter 4, verse 20, he said, the way you measure it, that's the way it's measured back to you. The way you see it, that's the measure that you operate in. You'll walk into a room. You'll walk into a board meeting with a sense of hesitation because you don't know who you are. You'll walk in with intimidation because you see yourself as this and not this. How do you see it? And you know what God said? God never chastised. He's not going to get on to you. He'll love you all the way to heaven. Listen, you don't have to have one principle given to you, and God will love you all the way to the very throne room of God. But you're missing the potential. You're living either in a 30-fold or a 60-fold, which produces a loss from what you could have had simply based on the way you measured it. Some people didn't get anything. Some just fell by the wayside. Some people heard the word, but they could never see it. And the enemy was there to steal the word. Mark chapter 4 said, when the word is sown in the heart, Satan comes immediately to steal the word. And he uses five areas. He uses affliction, persecution, cares of this life, deceitfulness of riches, lust of all of other things. All of these things entering in to steal the word. To steal the word. To steal the word. Those things distract you from who you are. Can I just tell you this right now? Sickness is a distraction. <laughs> Bitterness, unforgiveness, it's a distraction. We just came through this very interesting political season and people that are divided. And I want to say to the believers, you better get over yourself because that has become a distraction. We live by the law and the standard of love. And when we lose our way with that, we are as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. But it's a distraction. Sin's a distraction. Unforgiveness is a distraction. Sickness is a distraction. You know when you're sick, I can't even think about anything else. It hurts. Dear God, do something. Pour something on it, in it, something. Get, and that's all you can think about. A distraction from what? A distraction from who you are and what God has positioned for you to be. And so the enemy comes in. The Bible said, Mark chapter 4, I'm going to say it again. Affliction. For what reason? To steal the word. Persecution. 
Well, they don't like me. See, you're going you're, you're gonna to lose your way. You're going to get off track. There are some people that don't like me, and I don't understand it. I am without a doubt the nicest guy I know. But there are some people that don't like And there are some people that don't like you by assignment. For what reason? To steal the seed that God planted in your heart that is your purpose and his intention toward you. So affliction and persecution cares. I'm so worried. Dear God, Junior's got the car. He's going to kill somebody. I know he's going to do it. And we'll get ourselves involved in care. We care. We're so weighty over things. I caught my, I was listening to a news telecast some time ago, <laughs> and there was this guy that was just brutalized this dog. And, I mean, he just killed it and then sent a message to the owner and said, I killed your dog. And I was so angry over it. And it was something that happened in Miami. And I'm thinking, I'm losing sleep over what happened in Miami for pity's sake. But see, I, I get under the weight of that and the care of it. And that's why the Bible tells you to cast your care over on the Lord. So affliction, persecution, cares of this life, the deceitfulness of riches. When does riches become deceitful? When they become your source. If I give, I won't have enough. You're deceived. You, you don't have it because of your greatness. It was because of the Lord. You're going to accomplish what God said. I don't care if, and this is something we use at our place, if, if God has to cause the neighbor's chicken to fly over your fence and commit suicide, he's going to take care of your needs. I'm telling you, God is going to supply for you. But the lust and the pressure of other things, all of these things become distractions to us. They're distractions from what God called us to be. We can't even talk about what the plan of God is and what the purpose of God is and what my boundaries look like because we've had this problem and that problem and this distraction. And I want to say to you, shake loose from all of that. You're called to a higher purpose. And that purpose is calling you. Is he calling you? And so I hear the word of the Lord. I hear the word of the Lord. I, I hear it. I hear it. I hear the word of the Lord. But now I'm praying that through until I see it. I see that. I see it. Sometimes it comes as a confirmation to you. But you begin to meditate on that word. I see it. That's why sometimes it takes a while for a word to be accomplished in your life. Sometimes years because God has to change the basis for what you see. Some people have been raised with an attitude of poverty. There's a, po a spirit of poverty that works in people's lives. And, and it's not just the fact that I don't have money. It is a spirit of poverty that they operate in. And it's hard for them, even when they have the word of the Lord, to step away from that and where that's not shaping their life anymore. But the Lord says here, I want to expand your borders. And I, and I want to say to you today that God is going to give you eyes to see. And I feel like the word of the Lord that I'm giving you today because this is a house of destiny. It's a house of sending. It's going to be a healthy house. It's going to be a house of, of it's going to be a generational house. See, the generational blessing here isn't just going to impact the bishop and the pastor. See, this is the same anointing bleeds down and it affects you with you and your children and your children's children. That is a grace that is upon this house that comes, oh, wouldn't it be wonderful for you to have your children and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren living in the house of the Lord and walking with you in peace and walking with you in harmony? How wonderful that would be. That's the grace that is upon this house. Well, my kids are no good. Well, That's a measurement. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's why the Bible said in the book of Romans chapter 4, while we look not at the things which are seen, but the, or rather than Corinthians is where he said that, we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal or subject to change. They can change. But the things that are not seen, they are eternal. Now, of course, the things that are not seen are the things, the hand of God in the world of the Spirit. And those are the things God wants to reveal to you today. 
So this morning, I just want to declare the blessing of the Lord on this house. And I want to say that there is a step you are about to step into another realm. I'm, I'm, please forgive my heart's bigger than my mouth. I don't know how to say it. You you are about to step. There's another. There, I don't. I hate the word level. I just I hate that. But please hear my heart. There's another. There's another realm. Another grace that you're about to step into. That's going to be very significant. It's going to be very significant, and it's going to impact everything around you. It's going to impact your house, your children, your finance, your spiritual walk, the prophetic grace of what you see, and that you begin to declare the purpose of God. You begin to declare the purpose of God. The Holy Spirit today is calling you to expand the borders. God doesn't expand your borders. You do that. God says, I'm going to cause that to happen. You still have to do it. <laughs> We're in a season of change, the changing of a season. He showed that picture a while ago about the snow. That's a season. Now, maybe a long season over there, but it's a still a season. But it's a season. And as the winter turns to spring, and as the spring turns to summer, and as the summer transitions to fall, this house is transitioning to the next season of your life. And it's important what you see first of all about you not about the church what about you and I'm coming to a higher level I'm coming to a new place I'm coming to a new place it was very difficult for us as, as I was growing up because I came from a free holiness background that's kind of a low-class Pentecostal holiness. <laughs> but the hardest thing for us to ever say was, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Couldn't say it. Couldn't get that out of our mouth. And it took the changing of a season to move us out of that place now, that was a great place when we were there, but God said, I'm not leaving you there. And God said, I want to reveal to you something, and I begin to see that, and I begin to say it. And so the Lord says to hear the word of the Lord today and then see the word of the Lord. Then your next step is to begin to say it. And then finally is to start walking toward it. I'm walking toward it. I hear it. I could, could probably go through this whole place. And I'll bet you've got prophet, prof, prophetic words that, that are absolutely phenomenal. And how many of those words have never come to pass? Well, maybe God changed his mind. No, 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 God never changes his mind. God is really, really smart. If I could oversimplify it, God is really good at being God. And what he spoke to you was his intention toward you. Now what you've got to do now is to say, Lord, all of these years that God spoke to me and I've never seen it come to pass, is it possible? I've confessed it. But sometimes we confess things that we really don't believe. I don't, I, <laughs> I'm trying, Lord. I'm I'm not looking at it. I'm I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. I mean, it's like a lucky rabbit's foot. We think if we just if we say it enough times, it's somehow going to change. Sometimes you have to confess it a number of times simply 
to assure your heart. But once you see it, it's not a long distance from it taking place in your life. Because once you see it, you'll say it. And once you say it, you'll begin to walk toward it. And I'm telling you right now, nothing, nothing will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. And as the word of the Lord came to Joshua, you're going to go and your enemies are going to be scattered. You're going to drive out the wild beasts. You're going to drive out the giants. Are they there? It doesn't make any difference. What does that have to do with, what does that have to do with me? Peter walking on the water. Stop and think about this. What, what caused Peter to sink? What, what caused him to walk? Do you think it's, well, it was the stormy seas that caused them to sink. Do you think it's any easier to walk on the water on a calm day than it is a stormy day? But what caused him to sink was what he saw. I see something. I don't understand it. I'm like Jeremiah comes to me and says, what do you see? Well, I, I see this. He says, good job. <laughs> and then he'll come to you a little bit later. Tell me what you see. Continually is going to be the word. What do you see? Oh, I feel like some of you need to put that word in song. What do you see? I'm not walking there yet, but I see it. I may not be able to live on that mountain yet, but I see that mountain, dude. I'm headed that direction. I see it. I belong there. I am a citizen of that mountain. I belong there. Don't tell me. I don't need, a, a, I don't need my driver's license to show somebody to walk on that mountain. I belong there. So I want you to close your eyes with me right now. And as your eyes are closed, I want you to put your hand on your eyes. I just want you to put your hand on your eyes. I just want you to say this. I want you to say, Lord, give me eyes to see. <laughs> give me eyes to see. God, give me eyes to see. Change Change what I've been seeing. Change, Lord. I don't, want, I don't want, Lord, any longer to see myself functioning at a 30-fold mentality. It's not because that's evil, but it's just that's how that 30-fold person measured it. He looked at his situations and he measured that far and that's what he lived in. So, Lord, I pray, open my eyes to see. Give me eyes to see. Put your hand over your ears. Give me ears to hear. Now put your hand over your heart and say, Lord, give me, give me a heart to understand. And the Holy Spirit today is speaking to you, and he's saying this is going to be the day of transformation. This is the word of the Lord to you today. The word of the Lord to you today is that the season for your change has now taken place and now you're going to begin to walk in a higher realm and it will be progressive based on what you see. But as you begin to hear the word of the Lord and then you see it, I, I can see myself healed. I'm, I, maybe I'm not completely healed at this point. I see myself healed. I can see myself, I can see myself with $100,000 in the bank. I may not have a hundred pennies to do it, but I can see it. I can see it. And once I see it, I'm going to say it. I'm going to begin to walk toward it. And things, life all around me will begin to respond. People will respond to me based on what I believe about me. So, Lord, I pray, give us courage to see what you see. Lord, we ask it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, bless the Lord. 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 Oh, 
I want to speak a word here real quickly before I turn this back to your pastor. There's some of you that are not called into, quote, ministry as, as pulpit ministry. You're called into business. Some of you are called into business. You're anointed for it. And that's your mission field. And that's your labor. Don't you back up one little bit because the Holy Spirit is going to draw you into a new place of business. I feel like God's going to bring great favor and great resource into your hand. Why does he want to do that? If God wanted me to have money, why didn't he just dump it in my hand? Because that's the marketplace is where the world is that needs to be touched by the influence of your grace and your anointing. So I just feel to pray for businesses here. I just feel to pray for businesses. If you're in business today, maybe you have your own business, maybe you have a dream of a business, but you always said, I, I can't do it. <laughs> nah, nobody's going to buy my stuff. Nobody's, nobody, who would want that? <laughs> who would want that? Somebody created Velcro for pity's sake. I heard it was an alien, but I'm not sure. But do you know how much just out of an idea. God will give you an idea. God will give you a dream. It just be something. Just something. Thank you, Lord. If you're in business today, I just want to, or, or you have a desire in that area, I want you to stand up. I want to pray for you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay, anyone else? <laughs> okay, I'm just going to tell you right now, you ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen anything yet. The Holy Spirit's about to take you by the hand, and he's going to lead you into a place that, is, that, that might scare you just a little bit. But that's okay. The Lord is with you. And I want to give you a word to stand on at this particular point that the Lord says, I am with you. God is wanting to bring wealth into your hands. God is wanting to bring wealth into your hands. Now listen, if wealth owns you, you're in trouble and it won't take long for you to collapse. But there are people that God's raising up that wealth doesn't own them. It's just a tool. All it is is leverage. All it is is obedience. But every time God got hold of somebody, he took them and made them very rich. There's a man by the name of Abraham that God just took and he was rich and he was so rich he couldn't, he, they, their family had to divide because they had so much. Solomon, silver, there was so much silver that they counted it as worthless, man. They had silver dunes back in the back of the building back there. I'm just telling you, there was so much. It was an abundance mentality. I want to say that God's about to bring great resources into your hands. So right now, just open your heart. Father, I pray, give us eyes to see. And I'm asking, Father, that in these businesses that you would cause a supernatural anointing that would draw an anointing for favor, an anointing for strength, an anointing for blessing, an anointing upon them right now. I speak honor to these businesses. I speak blessing to these businesses. And I declare, you shall prosper and all that you put your hands to. I declare it over you, you shall prosper in all that you put your hands to. In Jesus' precious name. In Jesus' precious name. In Jesus' precious name. I see some of you that millions of dollars are going to come into your hands. Millions of dollars are going to flow through your hands. You're not, a con, you're, not, you're not a reservoir, you're a conduit. Don't be afraid. Don't be fearful. God's going to bring resources and leverage into your hands. And the hand of the Lord is going to be upon you. And you're going to see great things happen in the hearts and the lives of people. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And I want to say to you businessmen, this is what I feel to say to you right now. 
there are two commodities for your life that are very important. Care for the poor and share your faith. Amen. Care for the poor and share your faith. And this is essential for you as a businesswoman, as a businessman. And this is going to be a great time. Can you say amen? I want everybody to stand with me if you would. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. I so much appreciate the privilege of being here during this wonderful anniversary of this legacy time, uh, this kingdom work that is being done in this place. And it's such a privilege to hook up with you in partnership and walk with you. And I so much honor your pastors and, uh, and, and also the bishops of this house. And uh, I'm very thankful, and I so much appreciate you. And I'd like for you to give your, your pastor a hand of appreciation. Pastor Paul, would you?